Hello everyone, this is Antom64. I'm the Flamethrower. And welcome to a brand new live HFC playthrough. Today we are going to be looking deep into the philosophy of the android, the artificial human. Do they have souls? What exists after life for an android? Do they have rights? Should they have rights? Well, in this game, we're probably not going to find that out because we're not playing Nero Automata, we're actually playing Detroit Become Human. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same thing, basically, isn't it? Well, completely opposite sides of the quality spectrum, but um, it should be noted that, uh, yeah, Digital Alchemist won't be joining us for this one, because he's a busy lad these days, so, uh, yeah, shout-outs to him, first and foremost, for helping me with uh, the other three games that Derek Cage shot out. Uh, Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, and uh, Beyond 2, Ellen Pages. Now I have Flame with me for this one, and uh, i got to say, I'm kind of excited, because I've heard mixed opinions about this. I haven't heard it's terrible, but I haven't heard it's great either, so I'm really like looking forward to seeing the intricacies of the plot, if you can even call them that. Well, it's the kind of usual Quantic Dream reception, really, isn't it? Like, I think all the games have been incredibly decisive, divisive up to this point, and so this has kind of got the same sort of thing. I enjoyed it a lot. Like, I've played this through twice now, and I enjoyed it a lot, but, you know, I can kind of see where the usual complaints are from. Yeah, well, you like Sonic and the Black Knight. Why is really uncanny Jennifer Lawrence talking to me right now? Oh my god, the more I look at it, the more uncanny it becomes. I'll get used to it. To be fair, though, she is a robot. So, you know, it's not going to be 100% perfect. I, I guess. It, it's just from like seeing years of motion capture, you tend to notice the things that really pull you out. But uh, let's see, we have uh, English for audio, uh, for text, subtitles are on. Subtitles, eh, fuck Put it. Let's... Them at least to medium, because otherwise you can't read shit. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, keep changes, yes. I am ready to go, mate. Nah, this is a menu screen playthrough, I hope you don't mind it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine to me. I can always make adjustments after the fact, you know? Uh, I want immersive gameplay with advanced controls. A fair challenge where mistakes can mean losing a character. What do you say, annoying angel on my shoulder? Well, I mean, you are a bit of a casual, but let's play this properly unexperienced. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. Eh? This is really weird already, i got to say. <laughs> yeah, like, to be fair, it, I felt that when I first loaded up the game, feeling like, why is this, there this weird, crazy robot lady talking to me? But it's appropriate theming for the game. I guess um, so, I guess it so. It becomes much less uncanny once they, you sort of sink yourself into the world of Detroit. Okay, so we're just about approaching the 2040s here. I'm not really expecting us to have like fully functioning androids, but uh, they've started. Like, robotics has come a long way in the past 15 years. If they managed to teach them this cool coin trick, though, that's the important part. <laughs> no, that requires so many AI processes, like, the mind just boggles. Yeah, like, out of all the things that you see the androids do in this game, that is, like, the peak of their performance. This is what actually got me into Detroit in the first place, this character here, and, um, like, all the cool detective stuff in the game. Does that take up, like, a large portion of Detroit? Uh, it's it does show itself, and it's not insignificant, but it's also like there's more to his story than that. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. The Phillips family. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually the chapter that was released as a demo on the PlayStation Network. Go to the left, by the way, because you're walking past something cool. Ah, uh, well, it's <laughs> oh, too late now. I'm in movie mode. <laughs> yes, you are getting swept into the cinematics already, and right off the bat. <laughs> You might notice there's going to be a bit of a theme about how the androids are treated in this world. Oh no. Oh Jesus. Right, what was you wanting me to look at? Oh, here we go. Yes. <laughs> Gotta help the fish out, ain't ya? Dwarf Gurami. Uh, let's see. I will save the fish. Plus ten good karma. There we go. See, if androids can respect fish life, why can't the rest of us, Flame? Yeah, or well, maybe some people just don't appreciate that. They're more interested in, you know, the people who are in grave danger at this very second. But, you know. I guess so. I guess so. Now, I really just want, like, a straight-up detective game in this style, to be honest. It would be really cool. Oh, my God, I have, like, Batman detective vision. 
Yes, this R2 power is actually kind of useful because the main function of that is that when you sort of don't know where to go next, normally it'll have like a little gold thing glow to kind of say, yeah, go over there, mate. <laughs> Captain Allen, my name is Connor. I'm an android. Do you like me? Do you like androids? No. That is the premise of the story. Good night. No, I'm going to just completely ignore you. It already shot down two of my men. Okay, so a hostage situation with an android. Oh yeah, I remember this. This was from that, uh, admittedly really slick E3 trailer a couple of years back. You see, I didn't actually see too much of it. I remember there being the Kara tech demo a couple of years ago. I think that was at one of the Sony conferences or something. I can't remember if it was E3 or something else, but they had David Cage there. And I think this might have been the same time he was doing that presentation with that old man with a really nice eyes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. Of creepy. Yeah, I actually kind of wanted that to like turn out to be real. They still haven't got the mouse like, down pat, honestly. Probability of success decreases every time we dawdle. Save the hostage at all costs. Pause the game because I need to turn the volume up because I can't hear what the fuck Connor is saying. So I'll just minimise that. Don't you worry, we're keeping this all in because that's what David Cage would want. Yes, it's the true experience, isn't it? Like, this is a <laughs> moment where Connor here is just standing still because he's got to turn his speakers up. <laughs> That's still not loud enough in my ears, but uh, eh, whatever works, I suppose. So, this is basically the situation for these sections here. You just want to sort of get some context as to what might have happened before you approach the situation itself. Hmm. So, what here like, raises your curiosity? Um, shot wounds, bullet wounds, honestly. Well, I mean, that is usually one of the big tip-offs that something's gone wrong. <laughs> His hand! Oh, Jesus! Okay, so he was shot. I think that's pretty clear by now. Well, no, actually, he just felt to mark ketchup over himself. Yeah, I swear that's what happened. <laughs> Hello? Okay, Anthony Deckard. So, if you want to hold down the square, this is where you sort of piece together what may have happened to this guy. Uh, let's see... Okay... Rewind time... So he came in and... He was basically just shot down. Okay, move the camera. There he is! Now, if you get over to that gold section on the timeline, then you get a prompt show up somewhere, which kind of fills in the blanks for you. Oh, that's really cool, actually! It is, yeah. I, I do like the way these systems work. And like, I kind of see why people say that this is their favourite kind of thing that David Cage does, because it does work really well. Granted, I'm also down for the pretentious bollocks as well, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. Am I doing everything right now? Uh, yeah, you just want to find your old prompt there. There you go, we found the murder weapon. He was shot with a gun, who'd have guessed? <laughs> Although, is it murder if, like, an artificial life form does it? Well, there are layers to that as to whether it was, like, an error, which would imply, like, maybe manslaughter or something, or murder if it was intentionally sent to do that. Gotcha. Although, you know, we need to find out more about how these androids work to be able to piece that together, really. Okay, I'll take the weapon with me. It may actually come in handy. I gotta say, the look and, like, feel of the game is really slick. I love the UI so far. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I still have detective work to do. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little bit of a shooting out there, but we want to read this digital magazine that's there. And the magazines are actually kind of cool, the way that they're, like, a like electronic panel like a little tablet that you flick through it seems like a really inefficient way of distributing them cost wise but you know yeah what are you gonna do is it safe to go outside now have like have i like found everything uh no there is more stuff if you remember the first room that you went to explore where you were talking to them guys there's something on the floor in there that you can find ah i see don't worry mr hostage taker i'll be with you soon enough yeah, calm your tits, I just need to find out about your history. Uh, bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Probably around the other side. Feel free to like, just like, point me in the right direction, by the way, if you ever f see me making a tit of myself. Well, see, I could do that, or I could let you make a tit of yourself. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that would make for an entertaining playthrough, I agree. Yeah, so I will say what I'm going to be doing is that 
when it comes to decisions and things, I want to let you decide things for yourself so that I'm not like influencing you. Because I think the way the game prompts you to play it is to like just discover it first on your first playthrough. Like, there's a few little prompts in the UI as well. If you go to Reload Chaps and that, where it suggests like playing it through without any expectations to start with. Okay, okay, so the Deviant took the father's gun, and that's basically that. He took his gun and basically took the hostage that way. Yeah, now there is another room that you haven't actually looked in yet, which gives you a little bit more like background behind what's going on here. Point me in the right direction, Flynn. Uh The little girl's room on the right. This one? Yeah. Yeah, Purple Topia. Right, what are we working with here? Right, so if you have a look at all the stuff on the desk and that, and yes, it's the future. You can tell by the fact that the tablets are see-through. Oh no, I actually had to swipe the pad. That's nuts. I'm really in the future playing future video games right now. Yeah, even though Apple got rid of that slide to unlock thing like three years ago. <laughs> so it seems like he was fine with the family up until recently. Like, what made him suddenly become a deviant? Well, that's what you're gonna find out over time, but yeah, you've got another clue here. Child did not hear the gunshots because they were listening to the usual teeny bopper crap. Very interesting. <laughs> that's not justification for being kidnapped and shit, but you know, it makes me feel less bad. Okay, so there must be one other victim I'm missing here. Oh, there are some other things around here, but I think you probably do have enough like intel to start approaching now if you so desire. Okay, mate. Uh, do, do, do. I hope he's not mad at me for uh, making him wait so long. <laughs> I hope he's not mad at me for playing with the kid's iPad rather than actually doing my job. <laughs> oh, hello. There was an analyze thing. Oh yes, the robot blood. Mmm, a fine vintage. Uh, okay, he was wounded. Good stuff. Right, that will just about do it, I guess. Let's move on. Nope, gotta do it properly, Tom. Yeah, you gotta get used to your motion prompts. Jesus, was that really necessary? I'm just coming to say hello, mate. Come any closer, I'll jump. Oh god, here we go, Flame. This can go horribly tits up on a moment's notice. <laughs> it absolutely can. Hi, Daniel. Uh, my name is Connor. He's so sweet and innocent. Let's break his spirit before the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't be mean to Connor. Walk forward slowly. Oh no. He's destabilizing. Yeah, so you don't want to come on too hard of a threat. Because remember, he can just drop that little girl off the edge if he so desires. I know you're angry, Daniel. But you need to trust me and let me help. I don't want your help. Hmm. Nobody can help me. All I want is for all this to stop. Slowly, slowly. All I want is to stop. Come on. Are you armed? I am armed, and I will throw away the gun. Like you got to get on his side here. I know we don't negotiate with terrorists, but that's humans, you know. We don't negotiate with them. We just give in to them, apparently. <laughs> I know you and Emma were very close. So yeah, that was one of the options that you unlocked from seeing the stuff that went on in her bedroom there when you explored. So that's why she's talked to explore before you approach like the main crux of whatever may be going on in the chapter. I gotta say this is a lot more dynamic than it usually is in like Quantic Dream games. I love how I'm like affecting the outcome. Um like through stuff I've gotten in previous scenes. Yeah, that does come up quite a fair bit. Like I know one of the criticisms of like Beyond Two Souls and that was that you know, there was like all this background and then like the ending was like pick one. Now there is a lot more going on here. Alright, just move forward slowly. Easy does it, easy does it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not getting too close. Come on, give me more options. Um Talk to hostage. 
Do I fucking look okay? No, not really. You look a bit creepy, to be quite honest with you. Well, that's what happens with, like, computer-generated children. Every one of them looks terrifying. Yeah, I guess so. We'll never go back to the times of, like, um... Jason and uh, his brother, I suppose. Yeah, you guys need to back the fuck off here. See, I'm a perfect negotiator. I don't need any help here. I got this. Trust. You have to trust me, Daniel. Come on, Daniel. Don't I seem trustworthy? I'm your friendly neighborhood android, Connor man. The lamest Mega Man boss. He won a car, Flame. Shall we give him car? I think he's taking the piss a bit, don't you think? <laughs> no, no, we'll just give him everything at once. This is how I negotiate. <laughs> uh, yeah, also, here's my wallet, here's my keys. <laughs> You're not going to die, we're just going to talk. Oh wow, I got it to 100%. Nice. Okay. I trust you. Come on. Come on, you can trust us now. There we go, Flame, we did it! <laughs> you, you got this negotiation game in the bag. Oh, son of a bitch. That would have been really surprising if I hadn't already seen it happen in trailers. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can probably imagine, there are other ways this can turn out which involve him falling, and there's one where he takes Connor with him, and there's all kinds of different things, which for the opening chapter, in itself, that's quite impressive. It's quite dramatic, yeah. Although, to be fair, I never lied to him. You know, everything I said was the truth. There was no instability in my program. But, you know, he took he took a hostage. What else did he think was going to happen? David Cage presents Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> God. That looks pretty good, by the way. It had a really good, like, E3 2018 showing. Mm, I don't actually remember much of that, although I will say that that shot of the city at the end there, that is one of the coolest fucking things. Like, I'm a sucker for city shots, especially at night. Oh man, look at all this shit. It's like a family tree of happenings. Yeah, and each more tragic than the last. <laughs> <laughs> so I could have chosen not to save the fish? What the hell does that even affect? Is it just nothing? Uh, that one, I believe, because it's got that closing bracket, that is like, there's nothing on following on from that. Okay. See, look at this shit. I learned the Deviant's name, but there's still so much. I gotta say, I'm impressed with this system so far. The writing might not hold up, but the actual, like, gameplay and interface is really cool. Yeah, they do give you control over basically everything. So, it is really going in on the, I guess it's a butterfly effect kind of deal. There we are. My own android, for me. No one else, just for me. Now, wasn't that opening chapter a great marketing tool for androids? I guess so. Are we going to actually be an android now? Well. Come on, Zoe, let's go. Don't lie to me, Flame. You're always lying, always getting my hopes up. <laughs> uh, well, we're a product on display right now. Hmm, just a pearl, that's all I am. I thought that was Connor for a second. <laughs> nah. They don't keep the police negotiation models in a random shop oddly <laughs> enough. <laughs> Please, buy me. I've been standing here for years. <laughs> Why would you... See, this is something I've always found a little bit creepy. If you're going to make, like, human slaves... Essentially, why model them after humans when you could just make them look like more artificial? Well, I think the logic behind it is that they kind of want the androids to integrate into families and that and not feel too alienating to people. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. A likely story. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy you saw in that one trailer that the Daily Mail went full Daily Mail on. I actually don't know what you're talking about here, can you explain? Oh well, there's a scene from the trailer which shows his interaction with his family that kind of triggered off the usual, you know, video games of pushing violence thing. When we get to the chapter in question, I'll talk more about it. Okay, so we have Connor and Kara so far. Are there any human characters we play as? 
Uh, no, the playable characters are just the androids. It is very much a story of the androids interacting with the world. Okay. Yes, here we get our usual David Cage game intro scroll, which is admittedly beautiful in this game. I saw lie. I saw Clancy Brown back there. We've got Lance Henriksen, big names. Not like Alan Page and Willem Dafoe big, but I'm kind of glad he's dialed back a bit from wanking his I know a celebrity boner, you know? Well, I mean, that did kind of backfire with the fact that I doubt Ellen Page ever wants to talk to him again now. Jesus, <laughs> you're not wrong. Uh, I can't get over that one sh that one photograph of them at that panel where it's Cage, uh, D Defoe and Page, and like she just looks so terrified next to him. <laughs> yeah, well, you would, wouldn't you? If like a guy came up to you and said, I've been collecting photographs of you all the way from childhood. <laughs> yeah, like... Maybe he's not the best at this whole social interaction thing. <laughs> so i got to say, tone-wise, it's impressing me so far. Again, the writing could go to complete schlock, but I always have to give credit where credit's due. Like, the technology just to create a real living world has come a long way since Indigo Prophecy. It really has. Like, I will say, out of all the cage games, that's the one that I know least about. At least out of the main sadness quadrilogy now, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, there's um, Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls. There was Omicron the Nomad Soul, which was before that, so I guess there's like different series within the sadness shared universe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God. 